Sean Kennedy Sutherland. When are you going to make an honest man out of Randy? If you mean when are Randy and I are going to get married? Sometimes the glow goes off the pumpkin when after Halloween. You know? You carve out the little eyeballs and sometimes your fucking knife slips and you cut yourself. Sometimes you throw a hole in the top, you make it wrong, and fucking thing slips through and fucking candle burns the thing and stinks like shit. And sometimes you sometimes you forget they're there and about a month later they're all fucking wrinkled and shriveled up. And that's what Halloween is for. Experimenting. I'm not saying Randy's a hat like a jack-o'-lantern, but <laughs> when you think about it, he probably, like he's, I'm not going to marry Randy. No, because do you know why? Because the glow goes off the rose when the guilt, uh, you know, when the rose smells as sweet, Randy smells like a flower. <laughs> anyway. Josie Dobes given. Josie Dobes given. Josie Dobes giving, Josie Dobes. Everybody has that one liquor that they won't ever drink again, Lay. Is there one that you won't touch? Here's the thing. I don't like vermouth. I think vermouth is like, it's like, <laughs> it's just the most vile drink in the world to me. And I don't like gin that much either, and I don't like vodka that much. I like nice black strap liquor. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to make a, a, a rule. I'm going to, I'm going to take a, the only, unless it's free, the only liquor I'm going to drink is got a, a little dark, a little, a little to it. You know what I'm saying? That is, I'd like to have a highball. I'd like, give me in your idea, fuck you, but I should. And I don't like beer that much either. You know, this thing, drink a beer and then you go in the washroom, it smells like fucking beer in there. Why? Fucking go in one and never mind, fuck off. Josie Dobbs given. Chanel Ringle. Today, if someone told you you couldn't be a trailer park paper sizer any longer, what would you like to do instead? Well, see, there it is. That's what most people have a problem in their life. They don't know what it is they're going to do with their lives, right? And some people, you can get to be 30 or 40 or 50, and people still didn't, support, did, still didn't decide what it is they're going to do with their lives. Here's the thing. Here's how you do it. Take a look around at the world. Like, take, be objective and see what it is that the world, what's happening in the world today? What does the world need? Not what it is you'd like to do. Like, I like, oh, I'd like to be a movie star. I don't have a fucking chance. Or, I'd like to be a jet pilot. You gotta fucking work for that. Or, I'd like to be a brain. No, look and see what the world needs. And then, find a way that you can help and supply it. And if you can do that, then you're gonna have a happy life. And if I wasn't gonna be at Sail Park Supervisor, I would just look out into the world and I would see, what do we need? You know what we need, like when you think about it? We need people that can help bring peace. And how do you bring peace? You work with people and you make people happy. And people who are starving or living without roofs over their eyes, they need to be made happy. That's what I do. I'd work to make people happy. One people at a time. That's all I do. Yeah. And that would make me happy. Because seeing the smile on a person's face because they're happy. Here's the thing, though. Don't think that you can change the world overnight. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if you devote yourself to the positive nature of an imaginative contribution to the welfare of humanity, you're going to be happy. And being happy is more important than being fucking rich like those cock cunt brothers. Piss me off. Andrea Silverson. You know, I shouldn't say some of that stuff like that about negative bubbles. There's so many people now, there's a whole bunch of billionaires that are giving together and giving their stuff to, to charity and world peace and stuff like that. It's a, it's a movement. That's what I would do. I would try to get people 
to get on the bandwagon and that fun. Like, I think Canada should grow dope and should give it to the world free of charge. And that one might bring peace. Can you imagine those ISIS guys sitting back, having a toki poo? Hey, let's go cut some heads off. Nah, I don't feel like it today. That's cool, man. Let's go bust up some monuments. Nah, I think I think I'll uh, I think I'll just in, sit in a fucking piece of shit. You know, Andrews Iverson. Where's the best place to go in the event of a shitstorm? Shit storms are inevitable. Some people live a shit free life. They never have any shit storms, no shit strife. But then they, they hear a little shit bell and everything starts to go to hell and a shit storm descends on them. Here's a permission. Sometimes it has nothing to do with us. Somebody comes right out of the blue, whack up on it and T-bones you. Nothing to do with you. What do you do? I tell you. Don't face the shit storm. Turn your back to the fish shit storm. If you're facing the shit storm, close your mouth so it doesn't get fizz with shit. Don't sue anybody. Don't go after anybody for suing them because you'll get them all over you. I'm just saying. Try to stay away from the shit storm. If birds of a shit feather flock together, if that's true, and you're hanging around with shit weasels and shit birds, shit monkeys, walk away. Because they're always going to eat your shit bananas. You're never going to be able to have a shit nest to yourself because those shit weasels are going to fucking take it all from you. Walk away from shit problem. Because you are the eye of your own shit cane. And there's no reason that other people should fuck you over. You can fuck yourself over if you feel like it. But other people who are fucking you over, tell them to fuck off and walk. Gibi, Guy B, Gibi. As he's a French, he'd be a Gibi. If he's English, he'd be Guy B. Let's hear your theory about the universe. There is a cosmic equation. There is a, a creator, there is a source, there is a cause, but what name we call it? Like, we could call it the great unknown. If we all agreed on a name, maybe we wouldn't have so many people in different religions killing each other and and stuff like you go to a little town like and and you drive through and there's beautiful home and hedges and fucking everything's green and beautiful and you see a big church and then you look right there and then there's another big church and and then there's another fucking church and and they're a hundred years old and and there was lutherans and catholics and protestants and baptists and what the fuck what a waste of fucking time the understanding the universe is to take an ontological look, the wholeness, ontos is Greek for everything. Take a look at the whole thing, and we don't need to have somebody who was whatever, whatever. We don't need to have somebody who was taken down from the cross and wiped and wrapped linen and put in a cave and bug rock roll in front of cave and three days go by and Christ comes out, you see his shadow, go back to the cave 40 days. You don't need that shit. Here's what you need. You need to have a religion and a universal and an omnicological view that encompasses what is going on right now and not what happened before. Not the thousands of years of enmity between the Arabs and the Jews, not the blacks and the whites. It has to be a fucking soul based off. Look at this. <laughs> you have to have, a, a, what was it saying? See, that's a train whistle coming. If you could hear what was being said right now, that would be the secret of the universe. See, nobody knows the secret of the universe. Nobody knows where it came from. This is second way. Okay. 
Javier, Xavier, Xavier Gobblecon. Mr. Randy, we're filming here. Mr. Lee, do you still love Ju Mr. Lee, do you still love Julian? Look, in as much as one person can love another person, I mean, we, our, our propensities are based on way more than the physical nature of our heart thumpers. We have little penile, little signalators that, you know, tingle when we see stuff and when we embrace things. They get, you know, we get a little bit more, you know. I never had an opportunity to get the stiffers in, uh, other than just being, but we will, like, sometimes after you make love, like, sometimes it's golden and you feel one. Some, some people, after they have a little binky dinky dinky, all they want to get up and they want to get up and run up. But here's the thing. When, like, in the wild, like, if you hum, 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 and then, you, then your legs get weak, right? And you can't run as fast. And then the next guy who comes and bounces on Miss Lioness, he, he's got lots of strength because he's got a, a, a stiffer whoopus, and he's fat. And here's the thing. Oh, I forget what it was asking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I think I do. Here's a question from Morgan Sucks, S-Z-U-C-S. I don't know how to say that. If, if you could get drunk with anyone on earth, alive or dead, who would you choose? Well, if they're buying, <laughs> anyone. If I'm buying, got to be someone cool. How about this? How about Hunter S. Thompson? He's a pretty cool guy. Had his ashes shot into a hope of space because he wanted to commingle with the stars. And then who else? Charles Bukowski, he died, he was a drunk, he was a big drunk, but he was smart. He was out from the West Coast, he, was, he had a tough life, but he had a great outlook. But if I could get, like, I would like, if I could get drunk with anybody, see, I wouldn't, it's not just getting drunk, it's having the conversation, it's having the connection to, like, somebody in, in history that, you know, like Genghis Khan or, or, or fucking Charlie Sheen or, uh, or uh, like someone like Goebbels or someone in the bunker right down when, you know, Hitler, Hitler's name wasn't Hitler, you know, it was, uh, it was Alloy Schickelgruber was his real name. You don't believe me? Fucking look it up. I'd like to get drunk with Alloy Schickelgruber and find out the truth about who his father was and if he was, you know, just to fucking know. Because there's so much bullshit in the world. There's so much, you know, it, there's so much, like, I, I don't know what you call it. it it's, it's propaganda. Like, we believe shit that isn't true because we're propaganda caused. Anyway, I get drunk with anybody who pays for the drinking. If I have to pay, it should be, it should be someone really cool like Ernest Shackleton, the guy who in the endurance went down to the, to, to Antarctica. Now that's a, oh, and the guy, the last man standing from 9-11, that guy, Ricardo Rich's name, last man standing, bravest man in fucking history. Thank you. And this is Jim Lay signing off with them FMAs. More fucking mm, liquor stories. Thank you. Thank you.